Hey guys, Major Cade here back with more Call of Duty content and today we're going to be going back to the roots of this channel with our third episode of Call of Duty Tactics. This is a series where I break down real life tactics and strategies and apply them to gameplay to give you guys a competitive edge in the battlefield. But before we start, if you're part of the 73% that watches my videos and is still not subscribed, well, but what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on to get notified when my videos go live. Now, with that out of the way, let's debrief. Following the shield with the push is a defensive tactic and a directly continuation of following the air with the sword. This tactic, it's also a direct counter to that. Just in case you missed that episode of Call of Duty Tactics, I'll have the link at the top right hand screen. However, if you're still here, a quick refresher. Following the arrow with the sword is an offensive maneuver where the arrow plays your opening move and the sword will be your overwhelming close quarter wet work. A perfect example of this would be when you're sniping from a rooftop. You deliver your surprise attack, down a player, maybe two, and immediately close the gap to finish off the enemy team before they get that rest off. This tactic banks on pushing the enemy to the back pedal and then crushing them totally. Now, following the shield with a push, banks on the back pedal as well. However, instead of you forcing the enemy into that bad position, you will be the one that is compromised. And this video aims to show you how to get out of it. This whole tactic works on deception and giving the enemy the illusion that they are in control or that they have the upper hand. When those odds are stacked against you and you're 1v2 or 3v4 or the enemy has a better position than you, you got nothing to lose. This tactic is about attacking first. I want you to know that this is one of the most effective ways to get out of shitty situations. Standing there, it's only gonna make the problem worse. Now, there are three parts to this tactic. That is the ambush that is performed by the enemy team. Then, the recoup, or better yet, a half recoup. What I mean by this is that don't think you'll be able to get back into a full fighting position. You need to act fast. Pop one or two plates, reload if you have to, and you're back at it. You won't have time to pop three plates, reload, and rest your teammate. That's a fantasy. Next up is the third part to this tactic, and it needs to happen before the enemy follows up with their assault. Do this right, and you'll catch them by surprise. So now, let's run everything back so we're on the same page. Following the arrow with the sword is an opening attack, enemy goes on the back pedal, then you close the gap and eliminate them. Following the shield with a push, get attacked, go on the back pedal, recover what you can, then attack the enemy when they least expect it. But like always, let's get into those case studies and show you boys and girls how this works in real time. All right, first case study. I got a guy on the roof and their teammate just got out of the gulag. I'm playing duos by myself. Now there's an easy kill, of course. The dude only had a pistol. Now I'm gonna recoup and pop the single plate that I lost. Meanwhile, I'm hearing his teammate drop down from the rooftop, so I know he's coming. However, I didn't expect him to be there so damn fast, putting me officially on the back pedal. Instead of me waiting for him to make his move, go on the offensive, launch that termite. Notice how aggressive he is, how cocky he is. That's his downfall right there. Tricking the enemy into thinking that they have the upper hand is why this tactic is so damn effective. Moving on to case study number two. Doing a contraband or calling in a loadout, it's always a situation where you're going to be put in a sitting duck position. So the fact that I get beamed here, it's no surprise to me. Quickly get behind cover and use a self revive. I'm going to move positions as the one that I was previously in is obviously compromised. And I'm going to recoup what I can. This is one of those cases where I can get back into a full fighting position. But remember that that time, it's not always going to be there. I'm clearing the back pedal here. And this is a really, really bad spot. I have effectively backed myself into a corner where there's only one choke point and one exit. And to the enemy, there is no other position where I could be other than this one. My options are starting to become real, real limited. I'm gonna use this riot shield that I found before and look how blindly he pushes. And at this point, the rules are reversed. Now he's backed up into that corner with only one exit. Same situation as before here. I'm backed into a corner and I hear an enemy stomping outside and he gets me real good. I mean, one more shot and I would have been done. So now I'm gonna recuperate what I can. Now on the other hand, if I stay here, this will mean an express pass straight to the gulag. So I need to weigh my options and formulate a plan. Oh, 
Here's where I got that riot shield. Slap that on so I can get aggressive. The enemy opens the door, sees that I have a riot shield. I'm gonna close the door because my plan is not finished. I want him to think that I'm trapped in here. And right before he gets aggressive, I'm gonna push first, launch a thermite. And boom, just watch him die slowly. Now this is the last one that I got for you guys. I'm chasing this bounty. I pop my dead silence and I'm running up that staircase. Now I know that he's in the back room, but I still want to check the roof to make sure that if he's up there, he doesn't get away. Now obviously he's not on the roof, but he did just confirm my initial speculation. The fact that he launched that precision airstrike means that he can hear me above him. That kill streak is going to push me on the back pedal. I officially need to get out of here. But instead of me jumping off, I'm going to drop down and get aggressive. Use the sound from the kill streaks to hide my footsteps and done. As for reverses on this tactic, there are none. It's very hard to rewire your brain to act with caution when as far as you're concerned, you have the upper hand. In other words, it's extremely difficult to go against your ego. And this is why this tactic is so effective. It's damage control at its finest. Turning situations around is half of the battle in Warzone. So next time you find yourself in a bad situation, get aggressive. Even if your health is low, if you got no plates, if your teammate is down, just do it. You really have nothing to lose. However, you will be surprised to what you can do to an unsuspecting enemy that thinks the battle is already won. And well, that's all for me today. If you enjoyed this episode of Call of Duty Tactics, make sure to check out the rest of the series. I'll have a link to the playlist down in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, smash the subscribe button and turn your notifications on to stay up to date with all things Double Tap Show. As always, a like rating is appreciated. And now I'm Major Cade, and I thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.